Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is door. D-O-O-R. Really? You bet your life! The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! He's the egg the Easter Bunny brought. Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx. Well, here I am again with $1,500 for one of our couples. George Fenneman, who gets first crack at all that money? We invited some steel workers and some ice men to the program tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected ice man Ray Morgan and steel man Dan Daniel. Gentlemen, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, boys, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. And if one of you says the secret word, you divide $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mr. Ray uh, Morgan, you're the ice man? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Where do you work? Uh... Work the Union Ice Company in Hollywood. What do you do? Oh, we make and deliver ice. Oh. Well, how, how do you make ice? Oh, we put water in tanks. <laughs> You're welcome, huh? <laughs> You're sort of an American institution, aren't you? How many housewives... Still look forward to the Iceman every morning. Oh, thousands of them. Thousands? What's up? How many of them take ice? <laughs> now, uh, uh, Mr. Daniel, uh, what sort of work do you do? Steel worker. You work at steel? You mean you're a crook? <laughs> Now, why do you commit all this larceny? Uh... U.S. Steelworks. U.S. Steelworks. Yes. Are, are you married? Yes, sir. How'd you meet your wife? Did you steal her, too? Or... <laughs> well, I met her on a blind date. I had a date with her sister, and uh, I went out, and the fellows had me tangled up, and uh, they tangled the girls up, and uh-huh. I met... They tangled the girls up, and I get, the, I get the one I was supposed not to get, and the one that I got, I got. <laughs> You could work for the State Department in that. <laughs> what is your job uh, as a steel worker? Uh, I'm an open hearth operator. Open hearth? Uh, I up the melter. You help the melter, huh? At the smelter? Uh... No, there's no smelter. <laughs> That's only when the melter's in a swelter at the smelter, is that? <laughs> Why don't you have a smelter? We don't have any pig iron. <laughs> Well, if you don't have any pig iron, obviously you have no use for a smelter, eh? <laughs> Why don't you have pig iron? We don't have any iron ore. Iron ore what, eh? <laughs> iron ore hogs, or...? Now, what do you do? How do you help the melter? I up in charge the furnace. <laughs> Why does he charge the furnace? Why doesn't he pay cash for it? <laughs> What do you charge the furnace with, salsa? The scrap, well, the charging ram. <laughs> you mean you have a trained goat? <laughs> now start in the beginning, uh, will you? Well, the scrap is uh, brought up in charging buggies, and we use the ram... Brought up in what? Pray. In charging buggies. Charging buggies? Yeah. <laughs> what is a charging buggy? I never That's heard of electrically it. operated ram. Oh. Why are you saying you got my goat? I don't know. About that. Okay, now you got now. Now what happens? Well, I help the. That's where I come in. Really, is as, as a first helper. When we charge the furnace, well, I take over there and uh, melt this scrap down. Where does the white pig come from in connection with this? Well, uh... you have to be hammy to make it, or. <laughs> Well, that's that's good answer. <laughs> Frankly, you don't know, is that it? Huh? That's right. You've been shoveling that Schweiner eye into that finest all these years, <laughs> and you haven't the faintest idea why it's called pig iron. Huh? I know. 
a trough in and he, put in a trough and uh, put in a trough and uh, cool down. And the pig goes for the trough, is that right? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah
out from outside of Boston. Where is outside of Boston? Well, I'm just on the edge of the Cape. <laughs> well, I got you don't fall off, huh? <laughs> uh, you're, you're a young mother, is that is that right? That's right. Uh, how old are you, uh, Linda? I'm 27. And how old is your baby? Well, they were here Christmas Day. I have twins, twin oh, you boys. Have twins, huh? And how old is your husband? He's 28. 28. You know what a steel in God is? Huh? <laughs> you say your husband is uh, in the steel business? No, he's he's a lineman for the telephone company. Which which phone company is is he work for? Well, there's only one. No, that's not true. There are many phone companies. You ought to have your husband wise you up to some of these things. <laughs> Can't just go on having twins, you know. There are other. <laughs> In other words, he works for AT and T. Is that it? How, how'd you meet him? Oh, uh, I I met him. I was fishing for eels. <laughs> and that's the best you could do. <laughs> I'm a family of, of six. I'm the only girl. I have five brothers. And they're always... T- uh, my big brother... Well, thanks for the warning, Mr. Sutton. <laughs> uh, my big brother was going to... It was Just a... how big is your big brother? <laughs> well, I have five. Uh, I, any size you want, I got them. <laughs> now then, we were on the eels, huh? Well, uh, my mother wanted us to go get some eels. Not to eat, but uh, just to feed our cats. We had nine cats. Nine cats and only five brothers? That isn't even two cats apiece. Well, anyway, uh, my brother took me along so I could watch my little brother. Because as soon as I got there, my big brother went away. I think he went talking to some girls or something. So, uh... Really? <laughs> Brother, you mean he preferred girls to eels? <laughs> Can't be much of a man, that fella. <laughs> and uh, he came back in a little while, and he had this other fellow with him. And he says, uh, hey, sis, this is Sutton. So he reached into the bucket that he had, and he pulled out this great big long eel, and he threw it at me. And I guess he meant me to catch it, but anyway, it hit me right in the face. <laughs> is that considered romance in Massachusetts? <laughs> That's strange customs in New England. <laughs> Slapping a girl in the kisser with an eel, I never thought was. <laughs> was just the right way to get introduced to a girl. Huh? <laughs> do, you, do you work, uh, Mrs. Sutton? Well, yes, I do. I have a part-time job as a chocolate dipper. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Why did you say... Why did you say you dip? Chocolates. You, you dip chocolates? Dip them in what? Chocolate. I, I work with nuts. You take three nuts. <laughs> Mrs. Mr. Sutton, don't think that I don't. <laughs> I've worked with more nuts than you will ever see. Huh? <laughs> The girl tells me that she gets married because somebody slapped her in the kisser with an eel. Right? <laughs> well, are, are you... <laughs> <laughs> Mister, I've been neglecting you, Mr. <laughs> this was such a fascinating saga of love in New England that I just <laughs> couldn't get away from it. Uh, you say you're a baby photographer, Mr. Morris? That's right. How do you go about taking a baby's picture? Well, if they're about 12 pounds, well, you pop them up on a pillow to start. But if they're under 12, what do you do, throw them back? <laughs> Are babies like adults in that you can occasionally have to retouch babies' pictures? Oh, yes, you occasionally retouch babies. Well, how do you, how do, you do it, huh? Well, you have to take out the bags under their eyes and straight here. <laughs> you mean those kids have bags under their eyes? <laughs> what they get for staying up all night, huh? <laughs> Getting the bottle. A lot of those kids are old soaks. <laughs> Who takes the pictures in your family, you or your husband? Well, I take them of him and he takes them of me. Well, that's the only way you can do it, huh? <laughs> Unless you have arms eight feet long. 
Well, who takes the best pictures, you or your husband? Well, I do. The pictures he takes, they don't look like me. <laughs> what do you mean they don't look like you? Well, uh, last summer he took a picture of me in a bathing suit and uh, didn't look like me at all. Were you underwater at the time? <laughs> what was the matter with the picture? It was too light. Give us the lowdown, uh, Mr. Morris. What was the matter with the picture of uh, Mrs. Sutton? Uh, it must have been an overexposure. <laughs> Maybe that's why she was under the water. <laughs> well, I know all about snapping at babies. Now, let's see how snappy you two are with your answers. You're going to play your bet your life for the chance at $1,500 of the Soda Plymouth question. You're on your $20 and the more than the other couples, and you get a chance at the big question. I can't tell you how much our first couple won, but Fenneman is off stage to remind our listeners. The Iceman and the steel worker earned $140. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected capitals of states as your category. Is that right? Now, you got $20. How much are you going to risk? Fifteen. What is the capital of Kentucky? Frankfurt. Frankfurt is right. <laughs> On the way, they have $35. How much of the 35 will you try? 30. What's the capital of South Dakota? Pierre. Pierre is right. <laughs> They're starting to climb. They have $65. How much are you going to try? Sixty. Sixty. You don't care what he says anymore. <laughs> what is the capital of Vermont? Montpelier. Montpelier is right. A New England guy. Now they have $125. Uh, no, no kissing until the show is over. Huh? <laughs> the whole thing. Okay. Shoot it. rack a here, huh? You've got $125, and you're going to try for this one. What is the capital of North Dakota? Uh, Bismarck. Bismarck is right. And they wind up a grand total of two hundred and fifty dollars. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now we'll soon know who gets the chance at the fifteen hundred dollar question. And now, a word from the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Uh, just a minute, Phantom, and if each dealer has a worry, that'll be 3,000, and this is only a half-hour program. Well, Groucho, actually, words can't do justice to the skilled service you get when you drive your car in to an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer's place of business. In that case, this is the only program in radio that doesn't need an announcer. What I mean, Groucho, is that one must experience how the skilled DeSoto Plymouth mechanics working with the finest equipment can save time and money on your car. One must experience. Shouldn't we try to get a few more people into the DeSoto Plymouth dealers? Maybe three or four? Oh, you know what I mean. So does everybody else. So on with the show. Who's ahead in the battle for the $1,000? The housewife and the baby photographer are leading with $250. And the secret word is still door. We invited some Belgian war brides and their ex-GI husbands to the show tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mr. and Mrs. Chico Tellez. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, youngsters, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And if you say the secret word while we're talking, you'll win $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mrs. Uh, Tellez, is that the way you pronounce it? That's right. Tellez, huh? You're a Belgian war bride. Uh, where, where are you from? I'm from Belgium. Hmm. <laughs> That's just what I suspected, huh? <laughs> I mean, what part of Belgium are you from? From Molenbeek, Saint Jean. Is that anywhere near Brussels? Well, you know, in a country so small, most anything would be close to Brussels. Oh, I don't know. How about Detroit? <laughs> That's pretty far from Brussels. Yeah, I guess so. You're the Belgian war groom, I presume, eh? Chico? No, I'm hey, not. I used to have a brother named Chico. Huh? <laughs> but it wasn't me. It wasn't you. Could be. <laughs> Chico Tellez, huh? What kind of a name is that? That's not a Belgian name, huh? What nationality is it? It's there? a Spanish name. Where Where are you from? Mexico. <laughs> I suppose you were married in Hungary, huh? <laughs> what kind of work do you do, Chico? I are you in love, happy? <laughs> I'm a student at Art Center, and I'm a photographer. What sort of work did you do in Belgium before you were captured by uh, Chico here? I was a secretary. You were a secretary? Mm -hmm. What were you doing for Uncle Sam when you met uh, Lillian? I was in the Signal Corps in the photographic section, in the Army, of course. Yeah. 
Were you right up front? And... Naturally, I couldn't get out of there. <laughs> Do you have any little Brussels sprouts, Lillian? This is... <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> not yet. You have a delightful accent, Lillian. You speak English very well for us. Thank you. <laughs> How long did it take you to learn it? About three years. Three years. You're very quick to learn. Do you speak any other languages? Yes, uh, French and, and German. I speak a number of languages myself, you know. Should we have a little conversation in Belgium? In what? In Belgium. Just you and I, yeah? In Belgium? That would be impossible. Don't you speak Belgian? Nobody speaks Belgian. There isn't such a language. <laughs> well, frankly, I don't speak it very well myself. <laughs> Why don't the Belgians have a tongue of their own? That's because there are two types of people in Belgium. Men and women? <laughs> No, that's not what I mean. They don't have men and women in Belgium? <laughs> yes, they do, better clear too. up this whole thing, Lily. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, they have men and women, all right. But um, what I mean by two types is that they have Walloon and Flemish people, and they both have a different language, see? Oh, well, could you say something in Flemish? Could you tell me a short joke? Well, I, I'm from the French part. I don't know Flemish very well. Could you tell me a short joke in French? In French? Yeah. Yes, I could. I What's that one? Huh? Uh, you mean in French, right away, like that, Mom? Yeah, and then tell me what it means. Huh? Oh! <laughs> I guess I can get away with it. Well, um. <laughs> well, clean it up a little, will you? <laughs> Vous connaissez vous l'histoire du monsieur qui, qui fut réveillé à 3 heures du matin par le téléphone à 3 heures du matin et il se rendit compte que c'était le mauvais numéro. Alors le monsieur à l'autre bout de la ligne s'excuse de ce que ce soit le mauvais numéro et de ce qu'il est dérangé. Alors il dit oh, ça ne fait rien, de toute façon je devais me lever pour, pour répondre au téléphone. <rires> Chico, did you understand that? Oui, monsieur. <laughs> He's really a brilliant linguist, this guy. <laughs> well, Chico, explain, and, and would you explain in English what she just told in French? I think she can explain it better. Well, you, you, Lillian, he's shoving it over on you, yeah, huh? Yeah. You tell well, me what you said, huh? Something well, about the telephone, I guess. Yeah, there was something about it. Yeah. Well, it's all about the telephone, in fact. The what? Well, it's about the story of the man that was awakened by the telephone ringing at 3 o'clock in the morning. And so he went to answer it, you know, and he found out it was the wrong number. So the man at the other line uh, excused himself and apologized because he had, you know, waken him up. So he said, oh, it's all right. You're perfectly excused. I had to get out anyhow to, I mean, get up anyhow to answer the phone, see? So <laughs> Well, if Leopold is smart, he'll never come back to Belgium. <laughs> now that you've lived in California, Lillian, what do you think of Americans? And speak frankly, I'll probably go to jail, but it'll be worth it. Huh? Oh, you won't go to jail for what I say. No. Well, no. how do American men compare with Belgian men as husbands? Well, uh, they're very different. Very different. Uh, see. You see, a Belgian husband is, uh, well, he has an air of superiority and uh, he doesn't want to help his wife in the housework or anything like that. And he's just a boss, you know, that's all. Mm -hmm. And which system do you prefer? Oh, I think America is a wonderful country for women. <laughs> and that's just who it belongs to, too. <laughs> Chico, you were a sucker. You never should have left Belgium. Well, it, it's really been very interesting having you both here tonight, and I wish you a long and happy married life. Now, you're going to try for a chance at the $1,500 question. Beat the other two couples, and you win the chance at all that money. I can't tell you how much our other two couples won, but Fenneman's going to remind our listeners. The housewife and the baby photographer are ahead with $250. 
Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected composers of operas as your category. Yes. All right. Now you have $20. How much are you going to try? Well, uh, we don't want... Is that all right, Chico? Mm. <laughs> I suppose so. All right. Who is the composer of Carmen? Palim. Um, no. I got you. No, I... I... I'm sorry, it was Bizet. Oh, yes. They now have $10. You were too Bizet to remember that. That's all. <laughs> well, now you've only got $10. Remember, you're going for $1,500 tonight. Now, how much of the $10 will you try? $5. $5. Who is the composer of Lohengrin? <laughs> that's a good question. Oh, wait, wait. Can I see? Oh, Wagner. Wagner is right. Uh... Well, they're gaining their money back. They now have $15. Chico, that was not only a good question, that was a good answer, too. <laughs> All right, now you got $15. Here's your third question. How much of the 15 will you bet? And remember, each, either of you can answer this question. You know. Five. You're going to bet $5, huh? Ten. Ten dollars. <laughs> You're back in Belgium. He's the boss over there. Yeah, I can see. All right. Who was the composer of The Marriage of Figaro? <clears throat> oh. Couldn't be Mozart, no. Mozart is right. Mozart. <laughs> $25. $25, and here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 25 will you risk? 15 Who was the composer of Rigoletto? Uh, is it Verdi? Verdi is right. And they wind up with $40. And that means the housewife and the baby photographer with $250 get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. Three things you can always count on when you visit any one of the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Efficient service, courteous service, service at a fair price. These dealers are equipped and eager to give your car the very best in service, no matter how major or how simple a repair job. DeSoto Plymouth dealers have factory trained mechanics who know your car inside and out, regardless of what make or what year it happens to be. And in the hands of these expert mechanics are the most modern tools and equipment made. In other words, you can always count on really top service when you drive your car in at the sign of any authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And here's the housewife and the baby photographer, the winning couple, all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question, Groucho. All right, here's the lady with the eels and the chocolate dips, and uh, we'll see how smart you are now. Here we go for $1,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you, so think carefully, and please no help from the audience. Here it is. In the original Constitution of the United States, there are seven articles. How many amendments have been added to the Constitution? You must tell me exactly. What is the answer you two have decided upon? Twenty-two. No, no, I, I'm so, it's awfully close. There are twenty-one amendments to the Constitution. Oh. I'm sorry, that's the correct answer. Twenty-one amendments. So that means the big question next week will be worth two thousand dollars. Well, you lost the big money, but you won uh, two hundred and fifty dollars in the quiz. Congratulations and thanks to both of you. Your Life is a John Goodell production. Transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You Bet Your Life. Presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget, next week, the big question will be worth... 
$2,000. I'd like to thank the readers of Radio Mirror Magazine for voting our show the best of its kind on the air. Well, Bing Crosby's all tuned up and ready to go, so good night, folks, and remember, just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Folks, here's a tip from the National Safety Council. If you can't control your temper, you can't control your driving. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. (laughs) 